<laughs> oh, that's okay. Somebody. Hey, guys, it's Ted Bogert. Today we are with not Wagner, but Wagner Dos Santos. Wagner D is that what we call him. We're very excited to have you on the show, my friend. We're going to talk about what the new normal means in 2021 for startups, which a lot of you are working on. I know it because I, I work on those as well. And I think it's an amazing market opportunity. But this guy is, the, is a gem. He does so much for the community. Uh, he's super active, super involved. He's got his own show, his own agency. Look at that background. I mean, look, I'm in an <laughs> empty room at the Citrus Club and he's all in this professional getup. But that's because he loves what he He's does. He's in the he Citrus does. Club. That's uh, that's a little better than my setup. Well, I don't know. There is a bar here. There I'm you go. Sure you have a bar at your place, so I would. <laughs> you know, I can make a bar anytime. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, welcome, my friend. Thank you Thank so you. much. We've been we've been trying to get together on this for so long. You really yeah. do great things in our world and our community, and I want yeah. my audience to learn about those. So. Uh, welcome. And then Thank you. let's take a deep dive. So we're going to talk about startups. We're going to talk about the new normal, but people love origin story. They want to mm. know about you. They want to know about Wagner. Thank God right. that would have been such a horrible mistake <laughs> to be corrected live. Um, <laughs> Wagner just crazy. sounds so, so bad, right? It's Wagner. Not, we Wagner. Know it's I know better <laughs> because you have the, it's, it's not a call it an accent, but it's got it over your A. Mm -hmm. You've got that. I should know better, but that's okay. Anyway, all right. Fun, so tell fun. us about you. Tell <laughs> us about your background, maybe a little bit about your journey. Yeah. How you got to where you're at today. So it's a very long one. So I'll give you the short one. And I if like anybody it. wants the long one, they can go on our agency website where it says, you know, learn about the president. The whole story is there. But the, the, uh, the Cliff Notes version is that I'm in, this is my second career. My first career was in the music business, which was called the record business back when I was in it because I'm just, you know, a tad, Ted You're older. just a little older, just a little. You know, Decent. there were there were, rec there were records, and then then there weren't records, but we were still calling them records. There were CDs, cassettes, and then there was digital download, and then there was unemployment. So, um, you know, <laughs> the the music business changed a lot. I um, uh, in the last five years of my career in the record business, I was running a label under Universal, and I saw the writing on the wall, and I decided it was time for me to re. Then myself and and surprisingly or not surprisingly, marketing and advertising seemed like a good fit because everything that uh, I had done uh, with artists and the way that a record company is set up versus a marketing agency is very very similar. You have the same departments and functions. So uh, and I found a lot of other people from the record business did the same. So. Um, I didn't jump right in, of course, because I never run a marketing agency before and I was going <laughs> to you know, go out of business right from the beginning. Um, mind you, uh, I, I should tell you too, since I'm telling an origin story, that uh, I started my first business when I was 17 and this uh, agency now is my fourth business in, in life. It's the second You're agency. A serial entrepreneur. Actually. Uh, totally, totally. Uh, all that American entrepreneur right here. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so so um, I worked for some some big shops, uh, an Omnicom agency uh, called GMR Marketing, uh, an Interpublic Group agency uh, called Momentum Worldwide, and I also worked for Havas, um, their experiential agency. And, uh, and of course, being the entrepreneur, like you said that I am, I decided, okay, I think I'm ready to start an agency. So uh, I started an agency, uh, ran it for about nine years. And in 2012, I merged it with two other agencies here in town in Orlando. And uh, then after that, I went uh, to work for uh, another agency that I won't mention. Uh, didn't have the, the best of experiences, was there for almost three years, and then decided I had one more go at it. And uh, <laughs> a lot of people kind of pushed me and said, you can do it. And I was like, I don't know if I want to start a business all over again. But here I am. It's uh, we're going to be celebrating our fifth year in October. Congratulations! So All right, so let's talk a little bit about that. I want to talk about the entrepreneurial spirit. We sure. will take a deep dive into the topic, but I think it's always interesting to see um, what was it like for you to have your own company and then have to or then go work for someone else. Uh, you know, it's really interesting. Um, a lot of people say that they can never work for someone else that especially you know uh because you know they're used to doing things their own way and i didn't really feel like that um even though i heard that a lot i felt like 
this is going to be like a vacation because I don't have to worry about payroll. I don't, right? I don't have to worry about uh, our cash flow. I mean, sure, I have to worry about, you know, uh, the company I'm working with and I have, you know, uh, some respect for the company I want to see grow, but I don't have those other issues that are boggling my mind. So I thought this is going to be great. And, and I, I, I can only tell you in the most honest way possible. And, uh, it, and it sounds like I'm bragging, but I totally am not the, um, the two agencies that I worked at, the one that I merged with, and then the, the one that I worked for afterwards, I had the same exact problem with, the CEOs. And that was that in the beginning, they're all rah, rah, excited. Yeah, Wagner's here and he's uh, he's run his own agency before. So it's going to be, you know, employee plus, right? Right. And, uh, and then after seeing that I was getting a lot of attention from the media, I was yeah. uh, getting attention from the employees who would come to ask me questions instead of them. Then they started not to like me anymore and started to do underhanded things. Uh, to, to just make me upset and put me down. And, and I, I thought, I still can't understand it because I thought, you know, I, you know, I'm doing this for your company. You right. know, it's not for me. So you should be happy. Like if I have a, an employee and I have a lot of great, great team members and, and they're getting their own independent um, uh, fame and, and uh, media attention. Great. I'm happy for them. It doesn't have to come back to me. I'm I happy agree. for them. You know, but I think um, that, that was the problem. That such a good, to me, that's such a good point because I've ex I experienced the same thing. I Did own you? companies forever. Uh, people want my talent, my database. And when I went into the market where I was working for someone else, uh, that sound that looked so attractive to them. And just like you said, I wasn't dealing with payroll or payroll taxes or, oh, my God, all the insanity you have to do as a business owner. However, what I found was exactly that C CEOs and CFOs. They want you for your talent and everything else, but then they go back to the square, the the round peg in a square hole or whatever that is. They're, they they realize that, wow, you think like an owner, you think like an entrepreneur, I can't control that. Right. And it is a challenge, even though people say they want creative people, they want creative people that still go in the parameters of the four squares, the four uh, the squares that they, the square that they want. They want it to be yeah. just like them. Right. They want you, but just like them. It's, but plus, it's, you know, you, you and I, uh, you know, this is our first time doing a show together, but I've watched a lot of your previous shows, obviously, and we've been in communication for a while. And I love, I love your uh, personality, right. your, uh, I love your, I, I love your clothing. I love, you know, everything that you put together for your personal brand, I think is awesome. And, uh, and but I can see where big personalities like ours uh are threatening to people that are insecure, right? Very much so. so that makes it tough. And I think in your case, um, it was, you know, if you were a quieter person or whatever, not this big personality that that uh, you're a magnet to people, uh, you know, it'd be a different story, you know? It's fascinating because I think that um, I loved experimenting with that, but I am very happy where I'm at, where I'm not in that position anymore. I'm a partner, I, I, don't, I don't have to, uh, deal with that. I, I've always thought right. like an owner and people yes. people say that they want you to think like that, but they really don't. No. Or they want you to work like that as if you're right. an owner, but right. they don't necessarily want your creativity, your ideas. Um, it, it's, it's a fascinating little world. So kudos to yes. you uh, for going out. Now, let, explain a little Thank bit you. before we dive into startups. I have everybody yeah. asking about that. So just bear yeah. with me. So yeah, on the sure. marketing side, tell us what mm -hmm. a marketing agency does, because I think sure. in this day and age, it gets confusing. It gets melded with social media manager or project manager, uh, advertising, PR. And so I think a lot of people don't exactly know what you what kind of service you could provide for them. Through your sure. Agency. Well, um, I think, you know, there's so many ways to explain what an advertising and marketing agency do and no two agencies are alike either. And uh, many of them offer a lot of those things that you mentioned. But I think I think uh, the best takeaway I can give to people who are typically confused is that 
Um, when you bring an agency into the fold, at least if they're a good agency, um, you're not really bringing them or you shouldn't be just bringing them because you feel that you need some social media and they're going to do it for you and take it off your hands or they're, they're going to design stuff and, and they're, you know, those all are aspects of things that they're going to do, but where the value comes in is up here. You're paying the agency for the experience, the knowledge, the research they do on a daily basis, the fact that they can come in and think about a solution to a problem that you've been um, you've been working, trying to work through for a long time, and they can just do it like this because they have the resources. That's really what you pay for. And, and it's interesting because a lot of times businesses don't understand that. So uh, when you put a proposal together, they're like, well, where's the strategy? It's like, well, that's, that's kind of, kind of what you pay us for, you know? I mean, that's, that's part of the work, that, you know? But I mean, you know, it's funny to try to communicate that because they want your ideas, but they also want to know about your ideas. And it's right. just, it's a fascinating little world. It's a doing. trust thing. It's like, it is I, want, a trust I want to hear your ideas so I can trust you. But what's interesting about that, because I do understand that from a, 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 the other side and a psychological standpoint, but if you need an agency support, how can you really evaluate whether their ideas are good or not, right? Because right. Um, it's, um, you know, it's not about whether you like the ideas. It's about whether your consumer or whoever the intended audience is, if it connects with them. So you really have to go, I think, by an agency's reputation, talk to a few different people who have worked with the agency, stuff like that, you know? I think it's important for people I try to surround myself with um, people who are talented, like a you, where I was going to say, why did you bring me on? Jeez. <laughs> because there yeah, was a lead in. I got it. Uh, because um, I don't, I think I know a lot, but what I know is a little about a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I need to surround myself with people like a you who I could still partner with, meaning uh, you and I can brainstorm, and that's the kind of relationship you want when you're hiring a marketing firm, a, right. an advertising firm. You want to have that type of uh, rapport, but right. still, at the end of the day, I know you're smarter at what you do, and I need to trust that process. And I think that's where a lot of entrepreneurs get caught up. They think that they're an entrepreneur in every aspect of their business, right. and it's just not true. You're an entrepreneur yeah. spirit, entrepreneurial spirit. But the business has all of these facets that you don't know how to do every one. I'm just telling you, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm breaking the news <laughs> to you guys. But you are yeah. not, you're a great entrepreneur. You might be a fantastic business owner, but you right. still can't be all things to all people. And so you have right. to work with right. somebody like Wagner. And, and I wouldn't thing. discourage, I wouldn't discourage, uh, you know, businesses though, uh, business leaders to know a little bit, like you said, about the different areas, because there are a lot of business owners that uh, are on the flip side where all they sort of kind of know is how to run a business, but one little thing. Really but they yeah. can't, you're right, but they can't do anything. So if, if, if there was mutiny one day, uh, the, the, the place the place would close because the owner would not know or what to do. You know? I'm amazed at the business owners who are so good at what they do until there's a minor speed bump. And then <laughs> their entire world collapses because it's yeah. not on the path or what they've created in their mind and they left no room for mm. anything outside of that to happen. All right. Let's talk yes. about startups. I've talked a lot about the other stuff. I'm fascinated mm -hmm. by this topic. And by the way, that right. was a good segue to uh, pushing the book Good to Great. <laughs> yes. Okay. So push the book Good to Great. I didn't write it, but you know, uh, I, I should have, but, uh, but I, you know, um, I if anyone, you if you said you did. If anyone, if anyone has read the book, um, you'll understand why that was a great segue because the, the point, uh, one of, one of the big points of the book is the fact that, um, you may think that, you know, and have the vision for what your business should be and should become, but, um, you really just need to bring people um, not necessarily to specific positions, but people that are going to work with you in the company to then um, formulate what the business will become. Exactly. And it's it's a, an or organic process, and that's how a lot of successful businesses are it, run. It just, it, it's so important to know your strengths, and I mean know them. You, you, have to, you have to own them and know them, but you also have to accept the things that you are not as good at. I'm not as good on the technology side. I know a little about a lot. So I know a little bit, but I'm not good enough to be the person who could make a decision all on my own without some sort of advisor or some sort of company. Right. Um, 
I, I think it's just so critical. All right. So let's talk about startups. Startups, okay. this is a big deal. So uh, 2020 was such a challenge for most startups. Uh, everything dried up. There were no meetings. You couldn't have funding meetings. I mean, it was fascinating what was going on. Uh, but I, I know a lot of people spent that time planning, which I love. So 2021 seems to be the year where startups are coming back. So let's talk about what startups do um, in the new normal, because it is a new normal. It's a different way of doing business. Startups have to think differently. They have to think about funding differently. They have to think about structure differently. It's completely different than it, it was before March of 2020. So that's Absolutely. what we're going to talk about. Tell us. Well, give, well give I, your insights. I, first of all, I think that uh, one needs to accept the fact that we're moving into a new normal or that we are already in a new normal. That's the that's step number one. Uh, if you are uh, in any sort of illusion thinking that, oh, man, I can't wait until we reach herd immunity because then we're going to go back to normal how things were, that those days are gone. Those days are gone. Oh, baby. <laughs> we're, we're, not, we're not going back to that. And, and that's not a bad thing. There, there's some very good reasons for that. One of them is that uh, businesses as well as uh, uh, employees and workers, um, they learned to appreciate um, different, different things, different aspects of life, living, and work that they wouldn't have had it not been for the lockdowns and quarantine and all this kind of stuff. So it, as far as businesses are concerned, um, you know, uh, startups – um, you know, one thing I tell I tell people that are are looking to start a business uh, because it's it's probably one of the biggest mistakes that people make is that don't don't start a business because the the main reason is because you always love doing this and so you want to make a business out of it. That sounds like the right thing to do, but it's a mistake. It's What's been, a mistake. Right, right. But it, but it's, it's that natural. Does not make a business. It's no, a great no. idea. Right. You could be the best customer for it. Yeah, you could be the best customer. (laughs) No. So you have to know, right? You have to know the audience. You have to, basically a business, you know, successful business is one that is solving a problem, you know, either a mass problem or niche problem, but some kind of problem out there that needs either a fix that has never been created or a fix that's better than the competition. That, that's, that's the, the first, first of all, the recipe for a successful business. And then, you know, you mix the new normal in and you're right. Uh, last year was tough. The startups were getting some funding nationwide, uh, but it was uh, it was a little tricky because um, they weren't meeting in person. Right. Uh, investors were having to also kind of uh, figure out their business model and how they were going to go about, um, uh, you know, um, recruiting uh, startups and and soliciting uh, startups uh, in a different fashion and look into their business plans without seeing them. So um, so it was a little slow in that regard, but um, what has happened uh, for startups and other businesses as well is that it has this this new normal has provided an opportunity for them to rethink their business models. Um, a lot of things have changed. Um, uh, companies that were opposed to um, people working from home and people working remotely were forced into that situation. Uh, our agency embraced that about two years ago. Uh, so we were ahead of the curve. Um, we have an office in downtown Orlando, but barely anybody shows up there. I go right now, I just go there for the mail. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, the problem, uh, not to, hash this out too long, but the, the problem is a lot of this stuff we were talking about earlier of those kind of CEOs, they're micromanagers. They don't trust. So that's why they have a problem not seeing somebody sitting by a desk, but sitting at a desk from uh, for eight hours or 40 hours a week or more doesn't mean you're working. It just means you're sitting at the desk. Sure. So, uh, but you know, they don't understand that uh, they're, I think, bad businessmen for it. But startups have an opportunity now to, um, to be ahead of the curve. And, and the way to do that, you know, before you could still do that. And there was, uh, there were uh, trending models and forecasts that you could look at. Uh, and trending models, I mean, you know, looking at uh, human behavior, consumption, and what's going on so that you can kind of get ahead of the curve of solving a problem that maybe isn't totally a problem yet, but it's going to be a problem pretty soon. Uh, now you have to do that research almost on a daily basis because the new normal part of it means 
it's changing every day. We don't know what the next day is going to be like. And so you have to constantly be on your, on your toes and rethink. So it's an opportunity, I think, for those small businesses to uh, be nimble and uh, try things out, try different things. Don't forget about what uh, was, uh, was done before and what was successful before because that might not work again. Um, now we need fresh thinking. We need innovation, really. So what are you seeing out there from the startups? Um, you know, I serve on a whole bunch of committees. I have my TED's community, which does a lot of stuff with startups. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you seeing out there? And maybe for the people who are looking at a startup, maybe beginning one, um, you talk about one mistake, but what are some, what's some words of wisdom you can give them in order sure. to deal with this new normal? Well, you know, uh, some businesses have already done this. They've they've looked at the new normal and said, okay, well, um, people aren't going out uh, to restaurants as often, so uh, we're going to push delivery services. Now, you know, uh, I, I grew up in the restaurant business. My family, uh, there were restaurant tours for years, so I have a little insight into this, and I can tell you that uh, most, most restaurants, uh, especially if they sell alcohol, They'll make a lot of profit margin on the food. So having a delivery service uh, only that really hurt the restaurant business. Sure. Uh, you know, it it wasn't a solution as some people may have thought. Um, but you know, these delivery services, um, when people didn't want delivery, now they're they're seeking more delivery, and there's more companies popping up. So looking at the problems of today, what we have is, uh, you know, uh, we have the fact that people are. Uh, separated physically, they're not going out to eat as much. They're doing a lot more online shopping, a lot more Absolutely. online shopping than ever before. Um, so it, um, it it maybe seems obvious, but I have to say that uh, online businesses um, are definitely on the rise. So thinking about a business that has a strong uh, e-commerce platform uh, would be very smart thinking because um, that's also not going to change anytime soon because people who weren't so accustomed to uh, online shopping like the freak that I am that shops on Amazon every day, um, you know, they- Every day, man. Like that's where I go. I don't know how right? not to go there. <laughs> It's an addiction. It's an addiction. It's like women in their shoes, me and my my man toys, you know. So uh, that doesn't sound good, but you know what I mean. Um, I so, understood. We'll, we'll let so, the audience take that wherever they you want. You take it wherever you want. So, uh, uh, but yeah, you know, um, right now businesses that um, can translate well online, but could perhaps at some point have an opportunity to be in a brick and mortar, but. Something that I've said for many years and I think is going to, I think it's going to progress further is I've said that um, brick and mortar stores, you're going to start to see some of them and they're, it's already starting, become more of showrooms than anything else. It's going to be an opportunity for you to go touch, feel, experience yeah. the item, but then purchase it online. Or maybe there's a kiosk in the store and there's only like one person that can come around or maybe a few that just give you some information, but there's no register, you know? Yes. Um, so that uh, I can see that becoming uh, more the future, but yeah, you, there's a lot of a uh, lot of different uh, apps that are coming out that that has always been the case, but there are definitely a lot of uh, online businesses um, that are looking at how to translate what was traditional into the new normal. One of them is also in the banking industry, banking and finance. Um, we've seen this long ago and it didn't take off, but now you're seeing more online only banks that are uh, getting set up. It's fascinating. And, you know, so I belong to Aslo for a while. Mm -hmm. Aslo is one of those online banks. And what's fascinating is COVID actually shut them down. I had to close my account. Really? Um, yeah. So, Look at that because I, but I see for that one that shut down, there's 10 others that have come back up. And I agree right. I to find that because people are tired of paying. I paid no fees. There was nothing there, um, nothing against my big banks. But the mm -hmm. problem is, is that it, there isn't that service anymore. You don't have a personal banker. You do, right. there, There's none of that. So the yeah. opportunity or the advantage to banking with, some place that had brick or mortar where you got to know somebody is gone. Uh, yeah. You don't get to know anybody anymore. You don't get a personal banker. You don't get that relationship. And so these online banks, it's, it's true. Uh, there's a big opportunity there. For them. And, and the thing is, is that um, 
there are ways to mitigate the uh, lack of in-person uh, yeah. relationship is that you can have uh, visual chat built into your platform so that you can not only type a chat, but you can actually see one another yeah. if you want to. And so that way you can see the person smile, see that they're a nice person, whatever. Um, that's why Zoom took off so so well. If for those that weren't using platforms like that, they were like, oh, okay. They might not have realized it, but what was happening was that they were missing the facial expressions to really, because yes. communication isn't just by words, right? It's body right. language. And, and not having that uh, was made communication difficult. So that's, you know, a way in the new normal that I think businesses should think. They should think about, okay, how do you also make it so that it's not cold? How do you make it so that it's still a warm experience as if you, almost as if you were in person, you know? And I think that's what people want. We all want experiences now. Yeah. If anything, we yeah. have learned that experiences are super important, which is why you see a lot of these uh, travel companies popping back up, start talking yes. about startups, yes. because uh, they are focusing on the experience. And honestly, right. that's what I want too. I want mm -hmm. I want to spend my money, whatever I have, on experiences, not necessarily on these tangible things that I have to buy. And that shift has taken a lot of businesses by surprise. The travel industry has always been good about figuring out where that niche is. Yeah. So I love that they're creating these experiences that you can have. And I just was on a site recently because I have a big travel bug where they're yeah. talking about uh, vaccine only um, passports and vaccine only um, travel arrangements. And so we are we're getting ready to enter into a world where the vaccine is going to be either a limiting effect factor or an opening the door factor. Yeah, I, that's true. Well, and, and you know, um, my agency has done a lot of uh, travel tourism work in the past and that, you know, went away. But um, one thing that I had recommended uh, to many were that, you know, cause they were freaking out a lot. A lot of them uh, didn't know, you know, what they were going to do to keep their hotels open and yeah. so forth. And one of the recommendations that I had made was that it was an opportunity if you could financially sustain it um, to um, keep people connected, your, your, um, your repeat visitors connected by experiences, maybe sending out, uh, you know, either, um, you know, some augmented reality or VR uh, headsets and, and allowing them to re-experience the, you know, maybe the summer break that they had with you, you know, last, last year. And they could, you know, they could kind of feel like they're in the moment and maybe that can encourage them to book in advance, you know? So good. All right. So um, tell us about you. Tell us how we reach you. What's the best way if somebody is interested in marketing um, yes. wants to wants to engage guys if you don't have someone and you're struggling with marketing trust me you need a partner you need somebody I, i'm a For big sure. proponent of surrounding yourself and spending the money on the things that you don't know how to do so you can focus on the things that you do uh yes. what's the best way for them to reach you my friend yeah and, and if i could add i'd say look at look at um bringing on an agency as an investment it's it shouldn't Agreed. be it shouldn't be an expense line item because as an investment it needs to bring you a return otherwise it's not a good investment so we are very focused on making sure that all of our clients and, and we have clients that that have stayed with us from day one so um Hopefully that's a good testament to what we do. So, um, so you can find us online, uh, obviously at the Wagner agency.com. So that means the Wagner Wagner, W A G N E R <laughs> agency.com. Um, you know, however you, however you pronounce <laughs> it in your, in your land. If you don't spell it out, they're going to go V Wagner. Totally. Totally. -G. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be phonetic and, and you, you'll, you'll, you won't it's go anywhere. That's how we are, my friend. Yeah. You'll go to one of my competitors that probably figure that out. Um, <laughs> they're like, that's how we'll get his business. Um, that's how we'll do it. You can, um, one thing about our agency is that we're, we're not a, we've all worked at very big agencies, but we ourselves are not a huge agency. So we're all very hands on. So you can talk to me directly. Um, and uh, you can call us uh, by phone. Email is my first name, Wagner at the Wagner agency.com. Um, and uh, like you said earlier in the opening, um, I also do a podcast that some people are familiar with. It's called Wagner Live. I started 
uh, podcasting, video streaming, uh, you know, kind of before it was like the, the cool thing, you know? Um, and then I kind of took a break when it started getting cool again, but, um, I'm hoping to, uh, hopefully get, um, some more episodes into the schedule soon, but that's, that's something that, uh, we, we do, uh, live every Wednesday nights at 8 PM. Fantastic. You're a joy, my friend. That was amazing. Thank you it's so great. much. great. Reach out to Wagner, the Wagner Agency or the Wagner Agency. Tom, <laughs> if you're a startup or somebody who's looking for marketing, I want you to reach out to him. Um, I think it's Thank so you. important. You've got an idea. You're trying to grow in 2021. Yeah, we, we need, need to help. collaborate, people. And sometimes that, like he said, that's an investment, not an expense. And I love Absolutely. that. All right. Absolutely. You're a joy, my friend. Thank you so much. Go Thank to you for having me. Com. Reach out to him if you need. You need to get in touch with him. I'll put you there. Thank you. That was a joy. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I appreciate All right, guys. It. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll see you soon. Bye, everybody.